third year medical resident at Orlando Health in Orlando, Florida. I am presenting a quality improvement project on echocardiography use in undifferentiated chest pain patients at Orlando Health. Current literature supports the use of echocardiography in chest pain patients. As established in the Journal of American Society of Echocardiography article Appropriate Use Criteria for Echocardiography in 2011. Echocardiograms are performed either by official or unofficial means. The official echocardiogram is charted in the patient's medical, rec medical record and requires a cardiologist to confirm the results in 12 to 24 hours. There is concern for the number of official echocardiograms being performed that sometimes exceed over 100 per day and more than 1,500 in a month at Orlando Health. Echocardiogram overtesting could occur on multiple levels. Some questions were posed prior to the study. Is this a reflection of defensive medicine? Could this be a lack of confidence in conditions management? Does availability of the tests allow evaluation of subclinical disease? Is there a financial motive? For example, pay per performance. Is the testing driven by patients? Could the old adage more is better play a part? For sonographers, they are tasked to triage 25 to 100 patients per day to determine who receives an echocardiogram. For patients that are under observation, many were pending discharge based on their echocardiogram results. A significant number of patients in the chest pain center receive routine resting echocardiograms. With discussion with the chest pain uh, coordinator, patients were observed based on a diagnosis of, of a undifferentiated chest pain with documentation of one troponin electrocardiogram and check chest x-ray. The goal was to discharge within 17 hours. Echocardiograms ordered were read by cardiologists within 12 to, 24, 12 to 14 hours in a queue. This promotes a problem as low-risk chest pain patients may receive evaluation prior to intermediate or high-risk patients. Patients were managed by three physician groups, emerging medicine, internal medicine, and the resident internal medicine group. For methods, our SMART goal was to decrease the number of inpatient echocardiograms. We sampled 50 patients in one month. Patients were risk stratified based on the heart score. Each patient received a resting echocardiogram during the observation. Variables analyzed were patient's age, gender, stress performed, abnormal stress, catheterization performed, coronary intervention required, and days hospitalized. As a result, 50 patients were included in the study for chest pain. Over 80% of the patients were in the age group 40 to 69 years of age. 66% of the patients were female, 84% a patients had less than one or no signs of typical chest pain. Patients were risk stratified using the heart score, which showed 66% had a heart score less than three. No patient had a heart score greater than six. Resting echocardiogram were ordered by emergency physi physicians 54% of the time, attending internal medicine at 36%, and resident internal medicine group at 10%. 66% of the patients received a stress test. 8% of patients overall had an abnormal stress test that underwent catheterization. None of the patients required coronary artery intervention. Typical length of stay was two to three days. All patients were discharged with optimal medical management. In conclusion, the echocardiogram was determined to be a limited factor in discharging chest pain patients. Although 8% were discharged within 24 hours, majority were discharged greater than 48 hours. Sending orders were the main reason for half of the resting echocardiograms. This study provided significant information for future projects via this shared decision making with low risk chest pain patients that may benefit from early discharge, decreased length of stay cost of testing, and minimal effect on medical management like the heart pathway. References are noted below. Thank you.